here it says the repeating units in natural rubber is alkyne. No. Isoprene. Yes. Isoprene. Isoprene is the repeating unit in natural rubber. Right? The rubber that can be gotten from your wood. Right? Is a polymer. Is a polymer. So the monomer is isoprene units. The simple units that come together to form your multiple units that we call polymers. Alright? Is what we call isoprene. Isoprene. So the second question here is unsaturated organic compounds are identified by the colorization of without wasting any of your time, unsaturated organic compounds are organic compounds that have multiple bonds. Organic compounds that have double bonds and triple bonds. E.g. alkenes, alkynes, alkanals, in fact, carbonic compounds. Carbonic compounds are compounds that have C double bond O. Alright, so organic compounds that have at least one multiple bond are termed unsaturated organic compounds. The saturated ones are the ones that do not have any multiple bonds, like alkanes, alkanols, is that clear? Amines, and so on, and so forth. So, one of the chemical tests to distinguish saturated organic compounds and unsaturated organic compounds are three solutions. Number one, bromine water. Number two, Acidified KMNO4, potassium tetraoxomanganate 7, and acidified potassium heptaoxodichromate 6, K2Cr2O7. For your bromine water, unsaturated comp uh, organic compounds will decolorize it. For your acidified KMNO4, it is purple in color, so far it is acidified. Your unsaturated organic compound will also decolorize it, change its color to colorless, from purple to colorless. Or if it is um, alkaline, KMNO4, it's going to change from purple to green, from purple to green. So the same thing applies for K2, K2, Cr2O7. If it is acidified, K2Cr2O7, unsaturated organic compounds would decolorize it, change its color. If it is alkaline, K2Cr2O7, they would change its color from orange to green. The color of K2Cr2O7 is orange. This is K2Cr2O7. Alright? If you add any unsaturated organic compounds, this color is it is acidified. In the presence of acid, it will change to colorless. If it is in the presence of base, alkaline, it will change to green. Right? So that is number two, which shows that the answer is bromine water and acidified potassium tetraoxomanganate 7. Option, option what? Option B. If it were to be not decolorization, but changes from its color to green, then it will be bromine water and alkaline KMNO. Four, bromine water and alkaline KMNO4. So we move on to number three question. The conditions necessary for the extraction of a water molecule from two molecules of ethanol are, this is actually uh, under alkanols, under alkanols, dehydration of alkanol. The hydration of alkanol, when the alkanols are in excess, 
In this case, the ethanol is in excess because they told us two molecules of what? Of ethanol. You want to dehydrate it. You want to extract water out of it. Therefore, the acid, acid is the dehydrating agent. The agent that we need to remove water. In this case, dilute H2SO4. Okay? Has to be in limited uh, amount. And that is why we have less acid. Okay? And a lower temperature. Okay? Those are the conditions necessary for the extraction of water molecule from two molecules of ethanol. Ethanol in excess. Alcanol in excess. If you want to extract water from it, you need less acid and a reduced temperature. Or if the acid is in excess and the ethanol is just a molecule, you have a molecule of ethanol and you want to extract water from it, you need the acid to be, acid to be in excess and the temperature to be higher and increased temperature. So the answer to this is A. Number four, the chlorinated alkane often used industrially to remove grease. The answer is CHCl3. Trioxo, I mean trichloromethane. Trichloromethane. Alright? That's a mistake. The answer is actually tetrachloromethane. It is used as organic solvent. CCL4, another organic solvent, is DMSO, dimethyl sulfoxide. Right? It is used to remove grease. Tetrachloromethane is used as organic solvent. Trichloromethane actually is used as um, uh, what we call um, um, anesthetic. Anesthetic. You may be asked what gas is used as anesthetic? Nitrous oxide, N2O. Eh? The nitrogen one oxide, okay, N2O. Is the other gas that is used as anesthetic. The uh, trichloromethane, CHCl3, is used as what? As um, anesthetic. When they want to give someone injection in the hospital so that the person does not feel it, what they use, uh, they inject the person with CHCl3, trichloromethane. Trichloro what? Methane. All right, so we move on to question number five. Question number five. Question number five basically is the reaction of carbide with water gives a time. This is the way they produce or prepare a time in the laboratory. Cold water on what? On carbide, metallic carbide. All right? For instance, you have to also relearn the way we prepare methane. methane. That's the representative for alkane. Ethene, representative for alkene. Ethyne, representative for alkyne. Ethanol, representative for alkanol. Ethanol for alkanol. Ethanol for alkanol. Ethanoic acid for alkanoic acids. You have to learn how to prepare them in the laboratory. So they want to test if you know how to prepare a time in the laboratory. The waste reaction of metallic carbide with cold water gives you a time. For a time, it falls under alkane. Okay, it falls under alkane. Okay, so and that is basically uh, uh, sodium uh, ethoxide with soda lime to prepare methane. Sodium ethoxide with soda lime. Now to prepare ethane is sodium uh okay ethoxide uh sodium et weight rather sorry sodium weight plus what plus soda lime to prepare ethane to prepare propane you need sodium propanoid sodium propanoid to prepare a lower hydrocarbon propanoid to prepare ethane butanoid to prepare propane so the answer to this is a 
Number six, alkanons are generally obtained by oxidation. Okay. Let me just quickly recap this. To get alkanals or alkanons or alkanoic acid, alkanol is needed. But the type of alkanol that you need is what will determine the product you are going to get. A primary alkanol, when it undergoes oxidation, reacting it with KMNO4 or K2Cl2O7, it will give you alkanol. Primary alkanol will give you alkanol first. Further oxidation will give you alkanoic acid. Secondary alkanol will give you alkanon, N-O-N-E, alkanon, N-O-N-E, and nothing more. White tertiary alkanols does not undergo or do not undergo oxidation. That is a way to distinguish alkanols. That is a way to distinguish what alkanols. That is a way to distinguish alkanols. Okay? So, primary alkanols give you alkanas. And by further oxidation, you get alkanoic acid. Secondary alkanols give you alkanoids alone. Sorry? Gives you alkanons, ketones. Tertiary alkanols do not undergo oxidation. So number six, alkanons are generally obtained by the oxidation of good secondary alkanons. Secondary alkanols. So the answer is B. Seven. Sucrose is made up of sucrose is a disaccharide. Disaccharides. Um, this is just putting two monosaccharides together and removing the molecule of water. Uh, polymerization. Polymerization. Which we know there are two types. The addition polymerization and the condensation polymerization. You must know about this also. So sucrose is one example of disaccharide. Maltose is another one. Lactose is another one. Okay? Sucrose is made up of glucose and fructose. Glucose and fructose. The monosaccharide is glucose and fructose. and give you sucrose. It's your normal table sugar. Your glucose and your fructose come together. This one is gotten from uh, honey. Okay? And from other sweet seeds. So the answer is B. Glucose, glucose is maltose. Maltose. Glucose, galactose is lactose. The disaccharide you find in your milk. And that's why they say lactating period. The period at which women breastfeed their young ones. So that lacts. It's also from milk. It's a Latin word for milk. So lactose is the sugar that is present in where? In milk. So it's a disaccharide made up of galactose and glucose. So number eight, the compound above is an, if you look at this, it conforms to the general molecular formula R. C O O R. R C O O R. Just a quick recap. The general molecular formula for our case is R H. That R is CNH2N plus one. Alkenes is CNH2N and nothing more. For alkenes is CNH2N plus 2. Alkenes CNH2N. Alkynes CNH2N minus 2. Alkanols CNH2N plus 1 OH. Alkanols CNH2N plus 1 CHO. That is RCHO. You must know this. Okay, that's alkanas, aldehydes, alkanons, ketones, R C O R, R C O R. 
R C O R. Arcanoids. Esters. R C O O R. This is arcanoids. R C O O R. Arcanoic acid. R C O O H. That H is the unit for the acid. Remember, acid can be defined as a substance that is soluble in water and gives hydrogen a ion as the only positive a ion. So that acid, the hydrogen is representing the acid. So this compound here is an ester. R-C-O-O-R. Alright. So moving on to the next question. <clears throat> 